been happy in relationships in the Philippines. Um, I would say take a bit of time. Uh, meeting the right people in person takes time. And I would also say a lot of the people out there that are looking for guys, um, they adapt. So, for example, you say, uh, I love cooking. Suddenly, they love cooking. Um, it's more of a wanting to please situation rather than there's something they're actually interested in. It doesn't happen with everybody. And it's why you need to separate the genuine people from those just looking for hooking up with a foreigner. Um, there is a lot of genuine people out there. But I will also say the majority of people I know are not happily married. There's a minority group which are like myself, happily married. But you have to base it on the same facts as you would in the West. Not everybody you left school with, not everybody you met over your working career are still married. They're divorced. They're, some of them are divorced amicably. Some are bitter fights for the cash or kids. At the end of the day, that is life. Um, but I would say you need to enter the relationships in the right way. And part of that is actually seeing the person as a person. Because um, a lot of people don't, don't think that way. I've heard people say how stupid their wives are. I've heard how people say, oh, you know, that they, they have a living girlfriend. Or, and you think, what are you doing? If you're not committed to the relationship, why are you even in this? Um, because you can't complain if anything goes wrong. Because you haven't committed to it. So why would they? But communication is key. Asking what people want. And if they still don't answer. Or give some, some answer that you don't think is correct. Just say anything else. Is there something you want to add? Are you sure that's what you want to do? Because um, you'll hear a lot of people say, oh, I just want to have kids or whatever. What they're talking about is the time clock. You know, the, the thing they're getting older, need to settle down, have a family, blah, blah, blah. But they haven't thought past that. So it's the same thing. It's like, wouldn't you like to travel? Uh, would you like to go back to school? What would you love to study? Do you enjoy something? You know, it, you have to sometimes prize these things out of people because it's those core parts that are the foundations of a relationship. The amount of guys that go to the Philippines and start boat building, for example, uh, have a beautiful 19-year-old wife or whatever, and then six months later they're sat there having a beer, face miserable as anything, looking forward to sitting next to a load of other miserable old farts, um, is bizarre. I don't even know why people would even get into that situation. But they do, because the re whole retirement plan is not based on doing anything. It's based on the Paradise Beach. The beach, if any of you guys actually live next to a beach, uh, tell me how often you visit it. Because I live next to the beach in the Philippines, and I went the first year and second year, but not after that so you're saying year one year two i went but for another five years i didn't go to the beach but the answer is yes because if you're next to it you don't really notice it if you travel to it it's something exciting and new and that's what people need to think about and in a relationship what is going to keep the relationship alive also it's based on appreciation for each other. Um, getting your partner through school, getting them to do something they want to do, building a foundation for, you know, because I'm not being funny, a lot of you guys are going to be late 60s before you even go to the Philippines. Um, 
put the foundation so that they have a future even when you're not there. Um, people appreciate it and at the same time it should give you peace of mind that you've taken the responsibility of caring about your partner enough to make sure they're taken care of when you're not there. For me, um, I'm in a similar mindset, even though I'm much younger, but I'm very aware that sometimes I go in places which aren't very nice. Um, and I could have an industrial accident or be killed. So I make sure my wife is taken care of in the same way my in-laws are taken care of because um, although I'm not the, well, the golden goose is often the phrase used with Westerners, but I would just say that my in-laws look after me when I'm in the Philippines. So I look after them because they're family. Um, so we take responsibility for each other. And that's the sort of bond you want to be building. Now, if you have somebody that's obsessed with shopping and stuff, I would sit there and put a question mark. Is this the person I want to be with? Um, the second thing is bring the cash in on purpose. There's two reasons you want to do that. A, because of cost. But B, if you bring them in and they're still there and not griping about it, then you probably met somebody worth knowing. If they're griping about it and looking for somebody else, then you should have got rid of them at day one. Um, but there's some amazing people out there, some amazing women. Um, I know several single women that are marriage material. That's, that's the way to describe them. Um, because they have the commitment. They've already been through headaches with local guys. They don't want to marry a local guy. They don't want to be in a relationship with a local guy. They've sort of had their heart broken and life sucked out of them in some ways, but I'm not blowing my own trumpet here, but they do see how me and my wife are and they want a relationship like that. Um, we're not like the average relationship, by the way. Um, people find it a bit odd that I say my wife can go out with her friends and stuff if she wants. If she wants money at the bank, she's got access. To, she's got access to my bank accounts in the UK, Philippines, and Spain. And the big guys are completely shocked at that. But I'm in a proper marriage. Um, I've got a very loving and committed wife in the same way I'm committed to my wife. So we don't have... The, the nightmare stories that other guys sometimes seem to end up in. But at the same time, I put the question, of, question mark over at what point was that relationship going wrong before it got to the stage where everybody knew how bad it was. Because a lot of the time, it is not at day one. Um, it was even before that. It was on the first meeting online even. Um, and that's why I say day one is face to face, meeting online, etc., is prior to that. And often you you can suss people out. Uh, the guy that went to Philippines recently he hasn't contacted me since, <laughs> but we found out his girlfriend's in a relationship with somebody else, has been for some time, and, and may even have a child with him. And that's the sort of stuff I come across on a regular basis. Yet a lot of time the guy still go with the girl but they'll disconnect themselves from myself because they already know it's a bad decision so they don't want somebody that actually can reinforce the fact that they should be thinking about it and not just going oh i've met this beautiful girl blah blah because blah. in two years time six months whatever it will fall apart guarantee it but anyway thanks for watching